uh, thank you, Romy, for coming by. You know, for our video uh, on S on BMX bikes. Um, I would consider you probably an expert on BMX bikes. I know there's no official title or you know any special <laughs> award you get, but you know if, if I had any questions about BMX bikes, you're probably one of the guys that I would call you. You know, first. Uh, so let's begin. How, how did your uh, your BMX collection start, or your, maybe your love for BMX? Tell me a little bit about that. Well, um, just like uh, anybody else, you know, I'm already at the age where I don't really ride a 20 inch bike right. anymore. But um, you know, back in the late 80s, um, when um, when you know, one of my first bikes was actually a Huffy. I mean, it yeah. was one of your right. lower end bikes and stuff. And one of my um, one of my go or one of my dream bikes back then was a a mongoose. Oh, so okay. eventually, as I got older, I got a mongoose and stuff. But um, you know, um, through the years and stuff, I've always um, I've been a, a fan of um, of collecting and um, and bikes has always been something that um, always been in my heart, I should say. Okay. So. Um, you know, so I had bikes since I was a, since I was a kid. Um, unfortunately I haven't had any, I never kept any of my bikes. I always kind of upgraded as the years went on and stuff, but, um, but pretty much, I mean, I've always, um, since I was a kid collected, uh, bikes and other stuff just like it. Oh, yeah, cool. So let me tell, tell me a little bit about your collection now. How many bikes do you have now? Oh boy. Um, <laughs> it's, it's hard to say, but, yeah. um. Um, I'm going to probably say I'm probably right around the hundred mark. Wow. Um, and, uh, with that said, uh, probably at least half of them, uh, completely built bikes. Wow. Um, but averaging from pit bikes, like the one you have, um, displayed, um, and, um, um, to a 29 inch bike from a 16 inch to a 29 inch. Wow, so it's very, very, like, very impressive collection. What's what, what would be your, your, your price possession in the BMX bikes you have there? Um, you know, there's, the, I have several bikes that um, actually, um, how would I say, I, um, I love more than others. Yeah. Some that are maybe not as valued. Uh, Money wise versus the other one more it's more of a sentimental value okay. because of the fact that the people that I got them from yeah uh, perhaps you know rather than um, I mean I have bikes that are really high dollars such as uh, let's say I got a an 80, 80 actually 82 uh, 26 inch GT that I completely restored and um, I mean when I restored it I completely restored mm. I bought everything the best of the best that you could put on a bicycle from that era and correct to that era okay um, so it cost me a pretty penny okay. it took me uh, close to about two to three years to find all the parts and complete the bike and um, and I think when I look at it now it was well worth it mm. all the money I spent on it but I do have a couple of bikes that um, such as a, a bike um, that's uh, not real popular but it's called a, a California Custom mm -hmm. and uh, I got that through a friend of mine that's a, also a collector and um, it's a rare bike you don't see any of them out there and um, and he didn't want to part with any but I ended up getting one from him and uh, to me because of the rarity of it and the story behind it yeah um, it's one of my you know prized possessions I should say personal prized possession right, thank you now, so you mentioned uh, parts, like for that specific bike. What what is your process of finding first, like the the right the right parts for it, and actually like getting them? What what do you do when you say, okay, you have a frame and fork, and you say, okay, I want to build it up to the exact year of this bike? What do you what is kind of your process behind that? Well, one of the things I I do is um I do research. Yeah. Um, I'll go online. Um, I'll put in um like such as this one was a. 1981, yeah. 1982, um, uh, original um, GT Cruiser, and you know they're out there. So people post pictures. I'll Google it, go to images, and look at some that look like it would be all original. Yeah. And then read people's blogs um, as far as you know. I got this original, or this is, um, you know, a lot of people. That's their bike that they had back in the day. So. Um, so you kind of have a, an idea of what 
it should look like. Um, also, um, old advertisements oh, okay. um, that uh, they have as well. That's where I go to basically restore a lot of my bikes is old advertisements. Is, Your magazines, uh, maybe? Magazines. Uh -huh. um, you know, old BMX magazines, um, BMX Plus uh, is one popular one. Um, um, I also go to a website uh, that they use, it's uh, BMX Museum. Oh, yeah, very, yeah, very And everybody knows about that. Yeah. Um, I'm big into mongooses, so I'll go to Vintage Mongoose, oh, okay. and there's pictures as well on there. Um, so, um, again, I'll look at that, and then I'll, you know, I'll, I'll do my research and zoom in, and, and also talking to other people, you know, such as when I, you know, a lot of the newer stuff that you have here at Live for Bikes on, yeah. Um, I don't know a lot of the newer stuff. I knew more of the old school BMX yeah. stuff. So, you know, I'll talk to guys like you that know more of the newer stuff if I need to find, you know, parts Got for it. a newer bike. So talking to other collectors, find the right era and the right, you know, grips, tires, everything that should be on that bike during that era. And then you, and you went to the, and the best way you buy them at, where do you buy Bibles is stuff that's, I mean, you, can, you can't just go to a store and buy it. No, if it was that e if it was that easy, yeah. I'd probably have all my bikes built. Right. But, um, but like I said, it took me about two to three years, and that's again, I would research, and and then these parts aren't cheap sometimes. So, you know, it's a pretty penny, but a lot of things that if you um, if you want them, you got kind of have to dig deep, and if they come around or available to you, yeah, you're gonna end up. Um, you know, you have to jump on it because that deal may not be there yeah. the next day. And and do you use uh, mostly eBay or do you do like Craigslist stuff? Or what do you use? Both, I do everything. I do uh, mostly eBay, and also um, I go to Swami. Oh, um, there's a lot of um, uh, vintage uh, bicycle swap meets. Yeah. Um, um, you know, now they have also offer up uh, or Craigslist. And, and there's guys that advertise on that as well. Yeah. Also, again, the BMX Museum, there's advertisements on there okay. for, for okay. Uh, part sales. Um, and um, there's also on eBay, if you go to certain links, um, there's a lot of people that actually have online stores, but they just sell on eBay because it's more worldwide and yeah, people know it more. Very good. So now, what would be, let's say, one of the, some of the mistakes that you have, that you feel like you've done that you would probably want to share with somebody else, so they maybe won't. I think um, I think the biggest. Well, it's to me. It's uh, I think one of the biggest mistakes is um, is to go in over your head. Um, I, I think I passed that limit again. Uh, going back to you know my collection, it's a little bit too many uh, bikes to deal with. Um, um, but um, also one thing that I learned is. If you're gonna try to build an, an old school bike or even a, a, a new school bike, the best way to do it is to try to buy it complete. Okay. Try to buy it, you know, in, if you could buy it complete, you're better off, uh, especially when it comes to old school bikes, um, because of the parts that's available and the price you're gonna pay oh, for good. these parts. Okay. You know, again, it could, yeah. you know, it could be very expensive, so that's the thing. Buy a bike complete because you think you're going to get a good deal by spending, as an example, $200 on a frame and fork and, and perhaps, right, on yeah. a nice bike um, that, you know, could potentially be valued at $1,000 when you're done. Uh, but By the time you're done spending all that money to get it going. You're at $1,000. Yeah, so <laughs> you know, so at that point, you're yeah. kind of like, well, I might have well have just bought yeah one all done up already and yeah. i could have been writing it if a I, year ago oh, or for like okay that makes sense so so that so speaking of money low so what what like is your view or your your approach to making money on it or is that something that you kind of maybe not focus on is it just is it just the collecting just for the the love of the bikes or do you try to make money on it and if so how, how do you how do you do that and, and again maybe going back to not spending too much on on one bike um, in regards to that, it's, it's one of those things where, um, I'm not going to say I don't make money off of it yeah. because, um, that would straight out be lying to you. Yeah. But what it comes down to is that a lot of people that know me, they know that I don't buy to sell. Yeah. That's not my intention. Um, but 
don't get me wrong. Hey, if there's a, if I see a good deal on a bike, I'm not going to, I mean, a real good deal on a bike, I'm not going to pass it up. Yeah. If I know that I could, um, you know, buy something and make a hundred bucks real quick on it yeah. and, you know, I'll do it. I mean, and that's how I fund my own projects. Oh, yeah, that and that's sense. what a lot of people do, um, you know. Uh, you're talking about storage. You have two storages, right? I have two storages and... Um, Again, we're talking about um, I have them insured because, again, oh, yeah. a lot of people ask me, you go, dude, do you have your bikes insured? And I said, you know, at first I was like, yeah, 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 but then I really didn't. Yeah. But then I realized, you know what, yeah. uh, people are right, you know. I never, you know, I never had storages before, so I don't know what the, um, you know. The what, protocol or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. They, stuff, yeah, right? exactly. Okay. And, you know, then you hear about these storage wars on oh, TV yeah. and, and so on. They're like, well, what, something happens to you or this or that yeah. or whatever, you know. So anyways, yeah, but, um, but yeah, storage is, is, you know, I'm spending uh, approximately 120 a month on okay. storage. So that's it's not, too, not bad. too bad. That's not too bad, yeah. Um, okay. But yeah, so that's something that as a collector you kind of have to tie into your, your profits and losses, right? Because that's, right. it's, it's kind of like going to be your overhead, right, over right. time. So, yeah. I ran, definitely ran to people that used to collect them, and then he had been collecting them for so many years that, um, and uh, maybe like 10, 20 years, and then he was trying to sell them to make money. But at that, after 20 years of paying that much storage, I felt like he was in, he was lucky to even break even because again he was holding them for so long, and they were not bikes that were just that were very popular. They were just, they were just junk bikes, and right. I was like, I was like, well, I was like, why would you collect that? Like it was not even, not even something nice, right? So. But anyways, how would you um, advise maybe a brand new collector or somebody, maybe an intermediate or even a pro level, how would you advise them or what would you tell them about the new, the newer models, SCs? Well, I think, I mean, personally, um, SC bikes, I mean, I, I knew the original owner, um, Scott, and um, a really, really nice guy. And also um, Todd Lyons, which... Um, oh, yeah. Um, you know, he's pretty much uh, uh, running uh, um, SC um, bicycles, and, um, and he's the one that came up with, um, like, the SER bike, uh, um, the Big Ripper, um, the, um, what is it, Public Enemy bike. Yeah. Also, the, everybody knows uh, about the Fat Rippers. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and, um, but, I mean, as far as quality goes, I mean, I personally, and this is what I recommend to just about everybody, um, if they're going to buy a new bike and because of the dollar value that you get out of a SE bike, um, personally, there's not a better bike out there, in my personal opinion, okay. that you could buy out of the box and be able to ride it the way these SEs are made. And again, because of the fact that I'm a, a, a lover of old school BMX, yeah. this right here. I mean, when I look at it, it just reminds me of, I reflect on the older bikes um, um, that we used to ride back in the day. So yeah. I look at this and I'm like, wow, you know, that's bad for, especially for the pricing. Yeah. Um, and the quality is just amazing. Very good. Now, what would you, what, what, what would you do with, uh, or how would you advise somebody who just got a new SC bike about switching parts? And maybe uh, how would that tie into maybe the future value of it? Um, well, there's a there's several guys that I actually know. Yeah. A lot of guys I actually know that um, have bought SE bikes, and, and along with myself, um, the parts are are really easily interchangeable. Yeah. You could buy uh, really nice higher end parts for these bikes, and um, and they're easy to change. I mean, you know, especially you could come here and and they could buy the parts online if they want, or come here and order them through you. And, um, and switch them out. But there's a lot of um, higher end companies where you could buy better brake systems, better cranks, um, better stems. Um, and when I mean by better, maybe better looking or a better brand. Okay. Um, you know, it's kind of like um, in a car, you know, it's kind of like, well, you want your stock rims or you want your aftermarket rims. I mean, it's going to roll the same, but I mean, it's just going to look a lot nicer. Sure. And how do you think that would hold value again? And then. Um Hey guys, how's it going? Good. How's it going? How, how do you think that would hold value um, 
with the bike? You think it changes the part? Is it gonna increase the value of the bike, or is it gonna in the future gonna maybe make it a little harder to to hold this value or or decrease the value of the bike? Well, I think um, that if you're gonna if you're gonna change um, any parts on the bike, I, I don't think um, I don't think a lot of the collectors or people that own the bikes are doing it um, because of the money value or the interest in making money. Oh, I'm gonna change these pedals because it's going to make it worth more. I think they're doing it because of the fact that um, they look nicer. Okay. They, they want to make it their own. Yeah. Their own. But yet again, if you're going to put, you know, a $100 set of pedals on it, technically that's bringing the value of the bike a $100 more. Okay. You know, so um, again, I know a lot of guys that, um, that have SE bikes and, you know, they're buying a bike like this for the cost that... Um, you know, stores are selling them for, and they're putting in, you know, two, three, four, five hundred dollars easily wow, in a, investing that kind of money wow. in a bike. But you see these bikes, they look amazing. I wow. mean, a lot of these bikes are winning um, in bike shows. Oh, wow. I know several guys that have these SE bikes, and they're, you know, they're redoing them and making them their own. And competing and with And competing them, right? in, in bike shows with... Wow. Um, with guys like myself that have, you know, older bikes that, um, you know, high quality bikes, but yet again, they're right in the game with us. Okay, that's very interesting. If uh, somebody would ask you which of these two bikes you would, you know, you would, uh, would you would add to your collection if they only had room for one more, which one would you recommend? <laughs> um, man, that's a good question, but um, I'd probably go with um, with the Public Enemy. Um, because this is kind of a, a theme bike. Yeah. And um, um, there's a story behind this bike as well. Um, I know that uh, Todd Lyons, he ended up, he went to uh, New York. And uh, when they, um, I believe, revealed the bike yeah. and stuff. And um, he, um, um, there's a group that he has that rides over there um, for SE Bikes. And they went on a big bike ride. They gathered, you know, a couple of hundred people. Um, he passed out shirts um, that said Public Enemy on them. Wow. They uh, rode to a park, and, um, and they had a stage there set up, and guess who played? Wow. Public Enemy. So, again, the, 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 the theme, theme behind it, the theme behind it um, is, is pretty awesome, you know. And, again, they only made so many bikes. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of a limited edition bike. So, yeah. um, out of both of these... I would probably go with this because, again, it's a bike that you can look at it, you can leave it like that, and, you know, it's kind of a one of a, not one of a kind, but it's made to stay like this. I wouldn't change anything on it. Now, if I would have went with a bike like that, um, I'd probably change, you know, little things here and there, but as far as something that I would personally, I would go with something like this because it's more unique out of the box, the way it is. Very nice. Well... Well, I mean, thank you so much for stopping by. No problem. And uh, please like us, subscribe to us, and if you have any questions, you know, Romy, please uh, leave them below, and uh, we'll make sure to get back to you. Thank you so much.